gas consolidation benefited cooperatives and its members as well as drivers of modern jeepneys? This is a question needing to be asked, even as transport authorities maintain that consolidation is non-negotiable. Motor Inform discusses the experience of some of those participating in the PUV modernization program. As the year-end deadline approaches for consolidation, transport groups are holding protest actions to air grievances against the mandate to form cooperatives or corporations and participate in the PUV modernization program. Transport authorities see consolidation as a vital piece of the program to modernize public transport to make it safer, more convenient, and sustainable. Consolidation will allow PUV operators to avail themselves of financial and other incentives to acquire the modern units that comply with new standards for various classifications of PUVs set by government. But transport groups and individual drivers still resisting consolidation have been arguing that the modernization program is not feasible as implemented by the government. Many claim they can't afford to acquire the modern PUVs and that operating could prove unprofitable. Among those now saying consolidation is not benefiting members of cooperatives is an official of a cooperative. According to Pasig Mandaluyong Quiapo operators and Drivers Alliance Transport Service Cooperative Secretary Oscar de la Peña, this cooperative has not earned a profit in the three years since it formed and joined the PUV modernization program. De La Peña said the cooperative has not earned dividends from members and officials and debt has ballooned to 4 million pesos. The cooperative has written letters informing the LTFRB and the Department of Transportation about its problems and asking for solutions. A member of another cooperative, Guadalupe FTI Jeepney Operators and Drivers Association Incorporated, has another complaint. Its cooperative tied up with a Chinese national who reneged on agreements and did not pay. Another driver who drove PUVs for a cooperative claims he didn't earn enough because while he was promised a salary, instead of paying a boundary, quotas were set that cut into his earnings. These kind of situations point to flaws in the PUV modernization program that government needs to address. Otherwise, this won't be sustainable. However, an official of another cooperative continues to support the modernization program for another reason. According to 997 Sandigan Transport Cooperative Chairman Ferdinand Lupangosi, consolidation allows the LTFRB to easily check if PUVs are legitimately plying their assigned groups, which is difficult if individual franchises remain the norm. Some of the complaints against the PUV modernization program seem to be caused by individuals who don't take the guidelines seriously or are out-and-out out fraudsters. This may be the next problem needing to be solved by the LTFRB to ensure the PUV modernization program progress. That's our Motor Forum this week, courtesy of Suzuki Philippines.